Right, okay, I just want to thank everyone again for the effort we made coming down to the, the Black Flag Vigil. <coughs> it was really important to us that the centenary was marked in a dignified and respectful manner, and I think we've done that, and the numbers in there were fantastic, far more than people expected. So I really do appreciate the effort people have made. And it's also, I think, important though that tonight is, of course, the centenary's execution, so it's important that we think of that. And it's in the context of all the different 1916 centenary events that we've attended over the last many months. But for the Connolly Society, our strategy is all about focusing on Connolly's life rather than just his death. Right? So while these centenary events are important, it's also important that we move forward as well. And I'd like to ask everybody to get involved, become active, and make these events all of them as well attended as these ones were today. So we're now going to move on for that. Um, commemoration that we had about his centenary. We're now going to move on to a celebration of his life and music and poetry. We've got some musicians here. There's Stevie Dodds, Alan Hunter, uh, Jerry Mulvena, who's going to kick us off. And we've got some poems as well. The highlight's got to be Davy Lamb, who's going to lead up. He says the most, the most violent James Connolly poem you've ever heard in your life. So I'm, I'm sort of anticipating that with a bit, a bit dread, I have to say. But it's important, I think, that everybody enjoys themselves and that we give the performers here a bit of respect as well and remember what this night is all about. And moving forward, that we move forward together. We move forward focusing on Connolly, his whole life, his commitment to the working class, his commitment to Edinburgh, and we make sure that he takes his place as the greatest son of Edinburgh in this city. So June the 4th has got to be an important day for us, the 30th James Connolly commemoration in the city. So I want people to make sure, not just they're there, but they bring people along as well and make sure that's a great success as well. I'm now going to introduce the first singer, and it, Jerry Mulvena. And Jerry's got to sing a song for us, which we first heard in the late 80s, and it became something he, uh, an anthem for the James Connolly Society. We used to follow Jerry and other people who sang it around the pubs of Edinburgh, being pests in all honesty, demanding that they sing it again and again. And <laughs> so it's a great honour to have Jerry here and he's going to perform it uh, live for us just now. Nice so, Jerry Mulvena. Thanks very much, Jerry. <laughs> Uh, it's a real privilege to sing this for you. Uh, the song is about 30 years old, I think, now I think about it. So it's the same age as the James Connolly Society. And uh, the first line opens up with 100 years before I saw the light at morn. So that tells you something that James Connolly was about the same age as me when they executed him. So, because um, obviously 100 years is now since his death. So, um, <clears throat> no further ado, I'll just sing the song. So please join in if you know it. A hundred years before I saw the light of morn In Edinburgh's Cowgate, James Connolly was born The streets of Little Ireland were his home for many years From the Westport to St Mary Street, you feel him very near Oh, how I love to walk in the footsteps of young James Connolly Oh, how I love to walk in the footsteps of that great man. Well, in 1911, to Belfast he came to organise the union, the women and the men. The orange men and bishops, they were most terrified to see Catholic and Protestant marching side by side. Here's to his non-sectarian band Marching through Belfast for the Union's demands The fife and the drum scorn the old orange tricks And the ancient Hibernian stones and sticks Oh, how I love to walk In the footsteps of young James Connolly Oh, how I love to walk and the footsteps of that great man. While well, the national question was clear in his mind, for an Irish Republic, the workers must rise. Revolution was needed, reforms would never do, and the number of counties would be 32. Oh, how I love to walk, in the footsteps of young James Connolly. Oh, how I love to walk in the footsteps of that great man. So if you're walking through the cow gate this dark and lonely night, 
Remember young James Connolly and keep the flame alight. The social and the national, he swam in both those streams. For a socialist republic of Ireland was his dream. Oh, how I love to walk in the footsteps of a young James Connolly. Oh, how I love to walk in the footsteps of that great man. Thank you. Thank you.